Here's a quick recap of what we discussed in the last video. So we know that when we raise our arm overhead, we want our shoulder blade to upwardly rotate about 60 degrees, to posteriorly tilt and to stay hugged to our rib cage and wrap around our body. We also want to create that external rotation of the arm. All of these things combined together help to create optimal space within the shoulder joint and support the joint in this end range position. The main muscles we're using are the lower trapezius, which creates that upward rotation, along with the serratus anterior, which assists with that rotation, as well as keeping the scapula close to our rib cage and wrapping around the body. The external rotation of the arm is stabilized by our rotator cuff. We already know that in an Aisha, with gravity pushing down, we need to actively push to help facilitate that upward rotation. But what if we flip this around? What if our arm is overhead, but we're no longer pushing, we're pulling? Remember that the principles of good shoulder mechanics haven't changed. We still want that scapular upward rotation, the posterior tilt, the wrapping, and the external rotation of the arm. But because gravity is now pulling our body down, we need to lift our body up to counteract this. This is why when we're cueing shoulder engagement in pull, we often use cues like squeeze the shoulder blade down and back. This cue is to prevent us from hanging off the shoulder joint and to help us keep the shoulder blade anchored on our torso. But how we achieve that down and back shoulder engagement is important. The latissimus dorsi is a large muscle and the instinct when we try to create this down and back engagement is to pull down using our lats. The problem with using our lats for this down and back action is that our lats actually pull our scapula into depression, creating downward rotation of the scapula. Our lats also internally rotate the arm. These actions are the opposite of the scapular upward rotation and external rotation of the humerus that we want. Ideally, we want to reduce that over-reliance on our lats and instead recruit our mid and lower traps to keep our shoulder blade anchored to our body. This is how we should be creating that down and back action. How can we teach our bodies what this engagement feels like? And how can we cue this when we're on the pole? You can check out my five favorite shoulder engagement exercises for pole dancers over on my blog. The link is in the description below. And if you want to geek out more with me on all things pole strength and anatomy, my book, Strength and Conditioning for Pole, is also available on my website at thepolept.com.